Good morning, folks. It's another wonderful day in paradise. The big story, in my opinion, what's going on in the financial markets, it's all about interest rates right now. I'm looking for somebody who's talking about the collapse of real estate debt in China, and I'm not finding it. And I'm, you know, it's making me wonder if those are one of the, you know, it's the elephant in the room that we're not supposed to talk about. But anyway, so I went out and this is this morning, so I'm looking for Evergrande in a Google search, obviously. When you put a, a search term in quotes like that, you're, you're telling Google, it's like, look, don't show me anything that doesn't specifically include that term. And so that, that's why I've got Evergrande in quotes. And so we can see Fallout continues. This is the... This is one of the new shifts in this ongoing story of Evergrande. What they have done to date is only default on offshore debt. And so, you know, they're thumbing their nose at international investors while maintaining the, they're telling Chinese investors, we're going to take care of you, or they're given that impression. So anyway, this is the first time that Evergrande is publicly talking about defaulting on or delaying. They're not saying default, my bad, excuse me. Delaying payment on onshore bond payment. So let's continue. And then this, I noticed, this is is Shimao, if that's how you pronounce this. This is another re real estate development company in China. And so they're defaulting. I think it's a hundred million dollar loan. And if you, you know, you, you look at these results. And, and so anyway, Evergrande is having challenges in China. It is unknown, you know, to what extent can a default on $300 billion of Evergrande debt affect the global debt market? <clears throat> Don't know. We may find out. So yeah, this is that Shimao group. It's another real estate development company. Oops. Yeah, no worries. We're done with that. So anyway, in my opinion, it is, we have to at least keep in mind that there are debt issues in Chinese real estate right now. And it could be that some of this behavior action we're seeing in these debt markets is related to that. What I'm seeing as explanation is, you know, it's year end, it's new year balancing, it's this and it's that. But so far, I haven't seen anybody saying that, you know, hey, maybe it's time to get out of the debt market. But let's continue. Like I said, I, I, I believe this is the main story. Let's look at it. This is the weekly time frame that we're looking at here in the 10 year note. Let's look here in the, the daily time frame and we can see that not only did price or, or yield in this case, interest rates continue higher from yesterday morning when we look, not only did they continue higher after we looked at, you know, our video update yesterday morning, price was hanging out down here. Well, during the day, obviously interest rates pressed all the way up through that triple top potentially and a resistance level from the prior highs. And so this morning, not only has that move continued, it continued with a gap on the open. And so gaps are always a indicative of elevated energy. So th th there is a lot of energy right now driving interest rates, at least on the 10 year note, higher. And so the uh, series of gaps, and so if we look you know, now we've got this series of price bars and you can see, you know, gap, gap, <laughs> all of those are, are indicators of elevated energy. We could call that a wide ranging bar that closed near the high of the day. That's another indicator of elevated energy. There's the 20 day moving average crossing above both of the 50 and 200 day moving averages. MACDs in bull mode on a buy signal, stochastics elevated, although we can see today that, that stochastics have just started to roll over a little bit. 
But we also have to acknowledge that stochastics is a bounded indicator. It can only go to 100. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it, it peaks it peaks at 100. Let's see. So that that's the daily time frame on the 10-year note. Just a lot of energy there in those markets. Let's see. So gold, precious metals don't react well to rising energy, rising interest rates, as we can see, obviously, this morning. So here's gold. We're back down at 1787 at this point. You know, we've broken below all of the moving averages. Next level of support, you know, we could argue, I guess, that there's a little bit minor support in there somewhere, something like that, 1780. I didn't draw that very well. There we go. But you know, more likely 1770, because that's a support level that's been, you know, tested multiple times from both sides. Well, there's there's the testing from below as resistance. Anyway, there's gold in the daily time frame. Silver, same thing. Not happy camper this morning. So silver's reacting to both gold, which isn't doing well today, and then the rising interest rates as well. Oh, and then when we see big changes like this in the financial markets, some of what's going on, has to go on, is simply traders and air quotes around investors repositioning, repositioning their portfolios because they're over leveraged and if they don't do something, they're going to die on the limb. And so they go sell whatever has liquidity and they've got a little bit of profit in or a lot of profit in. And so anyway, you know, gold gets sold, silver gets sold. Oh, and they, you know, if they think there's a profit opportunity, not only may they sell their own long position, they may take on a, a, a bigger short position. Yeah. So anyway, there was gold and silver, GDXJ, we can already see in the pre-market, 39.54, so already expecting a lower open, which isn't surprising. I would expect, we got about 20 minutes till the equity market's open, that the mining stocks will take a hit today. Let's see, US dollar really not doing that much. The pitchforks that I, the Andrews pitchforks that I had drawn on this chart weren't doing anything for me this morning. I noticed this, this channel. And so I, I replaced the pitchforks with the channel. You know, the dollar's just doing this sideways consolidation thing. You know, maybe we get back over here to the, what would be the bottom of this channel. We may see some more upside action in the dollar. Let's see, we already looked at interest rates. Bitcoin is just not a happy camper. And again, it may be in people are selling anything they have a profit in, they are selling to cover other positions where they're taking heat today. Because clearly a lot of people, a lot of investors and traders are going to be taking heat when the interest rates are doing that. This is the SPX from yesterday. You know, looks like we've lost that plateau top, flat top haircut, however you want to look at that, pulling back down below the 20. And one of the things I would point out is that that is a high energy bar to the down, price bar to the downside. It closed very close to the low of the day. Let's see. Yeah, so the low of the day was 46.99 and the close was at 4700. So the, the this price bar closed within one point of the low of the day. That that's indicative of of low energy. MACD rolling over but still in bull mode, which suggests that the primary trend remains upwards. Stochastics elevated, perhaps rolling over. Dow, so same thing, you know, it had reached the upper median line of this modified shift pitchfork. And then yesterday looks like it rolled over and pushed below uh, that prior peak. And so, you know, that's not, not great action in the, the Dow yesterday. And again, another low energy bar low energy or high energy to the downside. However you want to look at that, that's that's not not a great price bar for equity bulls. 
MACD rolling over, elevated energy still. The tech stocks more sensitive to interest rates. And so, you know, we see bigger move to the downside in NASDAQ yesterday than we see in uh, SPX or the Dow. NASDAQ gave us a sell signal. So now we've got a sell signal in the NASDAQ energy dropping more decisively in the stochastics here in NASDAQ. So not very exciting in the tech stocks. Folks, it's an interesting, interesting start to 2022. Again, I'm keeping an eye on the global debt markets in in, a, in an attempt to understand what's going on here. So talk to you soon. Have a great day.